We're going to get this Swedish ivy cleaned up. We're going to cut it way back. Now this was grown outside during the summer in kind of a bright lit area, not direct sunlight. And so when we brought it inside, it was just thick. But as that light goes less and less inside, you are going to get a lot of this leaf shed that you see here. So they can become quite messy in the winter. And we're going to start by just taking off three or four branches at a time. See if we can rustle them away from the main plant. I've already pre-filled quite a few pots here. We're using a three inch pot and one of the things that I really would recommend is make sure that you pre-moisten that soil. Anytime you're working with potting mixes that are too dry, it's just incredibly hard to work with them. Also, they're very dusty. So pre-wet your soil like we're doing here. Once you've got them in the pots, we're going to cut this up into about six inch segments. I'd also recommend, it's a good idea to sterilize your equipment. We've got a 10% bleach solution here that we've just dipped our tools inside that. I would actually leave it about 10 minutes if you could when you're sterilizing. Okay, so we are going to go right below where the leaves are. That's where we're going to make our cut and then we're just going to peel that leaf back. And uh, we're shooting to get about two to three inches of that stem in the soil. I'm going to use a pencil to kind of push a hole down in there. We're dealing with the softwood cutting here and that means that the plant is actively growing. So once we're finished here, one of the things we'll have to do is create some kind of a canopy with plastic over all our new propagated plants to create 100% humidity. We won't have to have the terminals on every one. We'll work our way down the stem. Some of them might look kind of goofy. Here again, we're going to make that cut right below those two leaves. Pick those off. Make a little bit of a hole, just like that. If you wanted to, you could actually put several cuttings in the same pot. We're just going to do one, let that root in. Using a rooting hormone is certainly an option anytime you are propagating or doing cuttings like this. I'm using it on about half of the cuttings we're doing today. Just as an experiment, I want to see if we notice any improved results. As the stems get longer on Swedish ivy, it has a draping habit, so you're going to want to use a stand or put it in a hanging basket. Another common name, by the way, for this plant is Creeping Charlie. Since I live in a cold climate, we only use Swedish ivy as a house plant, but what a great house plant it is. Perfect for beginners as it's easy to care for and fast growing. A bright well lit room is plenty of light and it certainly does not need to be next to a window to thrive. Let it dry out in between waterings and definitely avoid letting the soil become overly saturated. As we mentioned in the beginning, I like to move my ivy outside in the summer months. It really seems to thicken the plant up and reinvigorate it after a long winter. I'll just briefly mention that same day, we also did some cuttings on some golden pothos. Some people call it pothos. But this is another one that'll do very well rooting it in soil. Over to the left here, we've got some rosemary cuttings and we're keeping the humidity quite high. We just did these a couple days ago and we're hoping for good results. That's a great way to increase your rosemary supply by cuttings. We've also done it with seed before, but it takes a long time for the seed to germinate and to grow out. It's been about five weeks now since we did our cutting project. I didn't really notice any difference between the rooting hormone and the non-rooting hormone ones, but look at these things. They're just coming in beautifully. If you take a close look at this one right here, this is one we used in the middle of the stem. This is the leftover part where we did the cutting. So that can just be removed, but look at all the nice basal growth. These are the two old leaves, one and two here. So this is all new growth over that five week period. Look at this nice little one. So this would have been one of the terminals where we used that tip. And we not only do we have nice growth coming out of that stem, at the tips, also at the base. So just a perfect little size house plant. Such a nice green glossy foliage with that scalloped edge. Just one of my favorite house plants, no doubt about it. That's all we've got for this video. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.